Hi, it's Dave Michaels. I'm in Oslo, Norway with Snorri Ketsbo, uh, SVP GM of Collaboration Devices. Is that right? That is right. All right. Uh, fantastic analyst event here. Uh, I want to just ask you about a few things that we heard. Um, let's start off with uh, your shift to being a Microsoft partner, Microsoft Teams partner. I'm thinking over your career, which I've been watching for quite some time, but but I mean, I, I've known you from Tanberg. Mm. You've always been competing with Microsoft. Uh, now you're a partner for Microsoft. How has that been personally? I, I guess you've got employees, you've got partners. Tell me about the cultural shift. Yeah, so uh, I think that if we go back to the Tanberg days and the early Cisco days, I think we've always been about interoperability. I mean, we drove standards in the old day, like H320, H323, and then SIP. Um, and then uh, it is natural to continue on the interoperability side. I, I've, I've believed in interoperability throughout my career. So you're saying no change, really? I'm saying no change, really, but I think there was also an epiphany, if I can say so, and that is that we went out and we asked 3,800 of our largest customers, and we said, how many meeting platforms do you use? And they said 85% said two or more. It was actually the same amount that said four meeting platforms as one. And when you take those numbers to heart, then you're in a situation where interoperability is needed and it's inevitable. It's something that is needed by the entire market out there. And then what Microsoft has done and what uh, Cisco has done with WebEx and also other players out there is that we have pushed a lot more functionality uh, with our, our cloud meeting services. And I think being able to be interoperable on that richer set has been... Has well, been let, let, me, let me ask you about that, because mm -hmm. there's obviously a lot of uh, vendors that are competing in this um, Microsoft Teams room space, mm -hmm. MTR space. Uh, what does Cisco bring to the table? Now, so what we bring to the table is that uh, we can do two things. You can either be WebEx first, then we have interoperability with Zoom, with Microsoft, with Google, using methods like WebRTC or CVI or those type of things. But a number of customers are also Microsoft Teams rooms first. Then you can, with a Cisco device, be Microsoft Teams rooms first, but also run full-featured WebEx at the same time. That provides uh, the option for the customer that can go from Microsoft MTR meeting, MTR meeting, to a WebEx meeting, to a WebEx meeting, to an MTR meeting, with full features, uh, uh, native interoperability for both. And I think that is a uniqueness that Cisco bring to the table. And if I can add one more thing. Okay. Um, you also get a lot of the qualities of the Cisco platform and, and uh, not at least the devices with things like all of our great noise cancellation. You can swipe in from the right and get the camera controls, the camera track, and things like that. So it doesn't do anything here, I don't think. But no, uh, <laughs> but, but but still, so we add a lot of, of value in those instances. You didn't even. Well. I'll add one. You didn't even mention the one I thought you were going to say, which is the breadth of the portfolio. I mean, you've you've got you've got uh, solutions for all sizes of rooms. That is correctly, and 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 you know, if I can just uh, recap those, I mean, that is from. Three, a good, better, best approach on the desktop through the meeting rooms to large meeting rooms to uh, interactive boards to systems you can integrate with, etc. So yes, and we are out there now fully certified on a digital, uh, so our, our, our board pro series, our kits, our uh, our, our desks, etc. Et so we now have a full portfolio. From the desk to the boardroom, is that? Uh, all, yes, we, we can now cover all of that. All right. Yeah. Um, let me ask you about something we saw yesterday. The uh, you've announced the cinematic experiences. Mm -hmm. um, it seems that something when our memo must have gone out to all the video players that uh, it's time for multi-camera rooms, um, and a lot of vendors are doing this uh, with different approaches. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the cinematic experience. What do you think is unique about about this? Yeah. So the interesting thing with cinematic is that we're taking AI into being able to help you in, in the meeting space so that you will actually get the best 
view from any room, uh, depending on who's having the conversation, who should be in the shot, etc. And if I can go back all the way back to 2016, when we launched our first series of product using the powerful NVIDIA processor, we've actually had machine learning algorithms in there for a lot of things like speaker track, presenter track, recognizing faces, etc. So what we're doing now is we're taking those building blocks together with a multi-camera strategy, we're putting that together and then we're adding a virtual director, an AI director that can actually put these things together so you can get the best possible view from, from that room uh, as well. And I think with this, we're really pushing the envelope of what's, uh, what's possible. And, and that is one of the key pillars of our AI strategy is using AI for enhancing video, using things like cinematic meetings, but also what we can do, do with enhancing video in low light conditions or low bandwidth conditions, etc. All right, so you just set me up for my last question, which is a four part question. You've answered one part. Tell me about the four pillars of AI. So our four pillars of AI is using uh, AI for enhancing video, for audio, for large language models, and not at least for analytics uh, as well at the end. And I spent time on video first. The second one is what we do around our noise cancelling, being able to lock onto your voice. We made a great acquisition uh, two years back of a tremendous uh, group of people that has brought uh, all of that knowledge into it. And we have been able to train and train and train and train this. We have over 500 million minutes of, of voice that we've trained it on. So this has become very good where you can filter out the dog barking or or, or you can lock on to Dave's voice only or Snorri's voice only, etc. And we've just started to push the envelope on those type of things. So that is the second pillar is using it for audio. Then you have large language models that we will use in our contact center business that we will use for WebEx as well to do things like taking notes, taking actions, uh, yep. being able to uh, add value when you are in a contact center uh, setup. So that is the third pillar. And the fourth pillar is, uh, is to use this for analytics. And if you think about it, uh, one thing is, uh, and we talk about that a lot, is, is we talk about good video, we talk about good audio, we talk about user experience. But what about the IT organization that's going to scale when you get all of these new setups out there? If you can have AI help them with that, AI to be able to, to help with the analytics, that adds a lot of value as well. So those are the four pillars that we're pushing AI for. Well, that, I think we'll wrap this up. Uh, Got to get out and enjoy the next uh, six, seven hours of uh, daylight here in uh, Oslo in June. Uh, fantastic weather out here. And thank you so much for having us and having us uh, do this video. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.